Um, my name is Alexandra Acor. This is my son, Joyce. He will be three in a few days. My name is Daniel Acor, and Joyce is dead. So at the beginning of early intervention, we received services from a developmental specialist. Um, she came to the house just once a month, and then they don't... Um, I was told that they don't give speech services from a speech pathologist until they're about two and a half. Um, so then uh, I advocated for that, like right at the two and a half mark. Um, so then we saw the developmental specialist and our speech pathologist. Um, going into early intervention services, there's nobody in either of our families that ever, that is disabled or received any kind of services like this before. Um, and certainly not any in-home services. Like that was not something that I understood or was particularly excited about. I joke that the only time I've ever seen that was on Call the Midwife and like in the UK, that's the kind of services they have. Um, so I didn't understand and I had really low expectations. And here's my baby who I'm coming to find all these things out, you know, while he's our only child. So I'm first time mom, we're first time parents. And um, very, very low expectations for this, like very apprehensive and guarded going into early intervention. And I would say it probably took me like four months and I just, they were so amazing and just so helpful and loved him just as much as I, as we love him. Um, and we're just as uh, invested in him and invested in his care um, as we have been. And, um, and then it came time for the speech pathologist to come start visiting. And again, my like expectations are lowered but by this time, I've been in the program for some time and I have some more knowledge. So she comes in and I'm like, this is my kid. This is what I don't want. This is what we don't do. This is what I don't like. Like, what can you do? Very low expectations. And she just exceeded everything and was so smart and totally met me where I was at, met him where he was at. Um, always shows up with a plethora of resources. Um, always has brochures, always has parent education to make sure that um, I'm learning alongside with him. And had an answer for everything. Always had an answer. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some questions that are specific to like his disability, but then there's also just like, we're first time parents and when are we supposed to start trying to potty train? And like, what does picky eating look like? These are some behaviors we see that we don't know if it's developmentally kind of appropriate or is it not? Um, and how to handle it. And um, I think that through the services, we really came to find what our values were as a family and what we, I don't know, kind of outlined what we want for Joyce and the type of care that we want for Joyce. So I would say that parent education is like a cornerstone of the early intervention services because we are Joyce's therapists and parents, right? Like we're the ones that can implement changes and um, set boundaries and expand on skills all the time and not like in a scheduled setting. Um, and the reality is he's not going to learn new skills, new techniques in one hour session. Yeah. It's up to us to kind of bring that to everyday life and, Yes. So the sessions were more to teach us and how to assist him, I would feel. Yes, totally. Um, and um, I think that a lot of therapy for children with disabilities gets put on them. A lot of the work gets put on them, right? That you give them these goals. These kids have to meet these goals. They have to show up for these appointments that can last so long sometimes and they're so frequent. Um, but in the reality, their disability is not their job. This is just their life. And we're here to support them um, and find accommodations for them so that they can live the best, most fulfilling life. And that's gonna start with parent education. Um, so that really goes a long way. And then something that I, <clears throat> as a first time parent, first time mom, something that I struggled with a lot is that while Danny's working, I'm the one taking him to these appointments and I'm the one getting all of the therapy and I'm the one absorbing all this parent education. So a lot of questions I would ask 
of early intervention is. Like, can you give me some handouts so I can give my husband, right? He's not here today, so give me something concrete that I could hand over to him um, so that we can stay on the same page and I don't get put in this like coach position all the time. They're so bright. And it almost feels like, it feels like they're, like not a lot's happening sometimes. And that's just kind of how therapy goes. I think you, you, you don't see quick changes all the time. But when I look back on it, I'm like, oh, this is what she was doing. This is what the plan was. That's why she brought out this resource or this brochure at that time. Um, and it all makes sense and it all clicks. And he really, I, I want to say we as a family really grew so much in the last year with early interventions gui guidance. I, I, I can be uh, an anxious researcher and I will just research and Google and just try to find answers. Um, and so would I have come to some of these answers on my own? Maybe, but it put that, the early intervention took a lot of weight off of me, knowing that they were gonna come with answers or they were gonna come with solutions so that in my off time, I don't have to anxiously spiral into research. I can focus on my kid, we can have fun, I can let go of some anxiety um, and know that I can rely on their support. You know, I don't think there are Without their guidance, there would have been um, maybe some things where we could have been hyper fixated on where they maybe led us to believe that it was okay. Mm -hmm. Like with things like screen time. we I know we were anxious about how much screen time he gets, but if he's pulling so much language from it and is able to use that everyday life, which is something that they kind of helped us realize. Let it go. Exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. Joyce attends a nature preschool, which is all totally outside. Um, and he was eloping, just kind of like running off from the group and not staying with the group. And, um, and you can approach that in so many different ways, right? I went to our, our psychologist, his psychologist, and I said, he's eloping. I don't know what to do. How can I fix that? And she's like, oh, well, take him to the front and call him back. And when he comes back, give him a treat. You know, it doesn't really sound, it sounds like I'm training a dog. It doesn't sound like I'm working with my child on a behavior. Um, and so I was just getting all these like behavior based answers and then early intervention was like, try a social story to help him understand why he wants to stay with the group. Right. Um, so I was able to take pictures of him at his preschool and it just talked about, um, uh, it's time for circle time. I want to stay with the group. I want to stay in play. And it gave him specific language on how to stay in play when I went off. When I run off, my teacher is going to say, no, stop, come back. I want to run back and I want to be with my teacher. And it made such a huge difference. And it's now a tool that we use going forward whenever we have any kind of big behaviors that we want to try to steer in a certain direction. Um, and it feels very affirming for Joyce and not um, like we're working against him, but we're working with him. With early intervention, we were always impressed with how they were not focused on his deficits, but always singing yes. his praises. And that's just with a lot of the professionals that we've worked with, with his diagnosis, that's just not always the case. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. And when you, when your child is, has a disability of some kind, it is assessment after evaluation, after assessment, questionnaires and doctor's appointments and you're consistently getting bombarded with this paperwork that says these are their challenges these are deficits this is what's wrong with your kid over and over and over and it becomes very traumatic to the fact to the point where I don't want to do evaluations anymore it's very scary um, so having that affirming team for him it just feels so good because He's more than what's in an assessment. He's more than what's in an evaluation. More than a score. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah.